Hi everyone, Matthew here, CanadianRenegade.com. Today I'm going to talk about how you can make a free topographical map like this one that you see right here that also has a satellite imagery overview on it as well. This type of map will give you a better idea of what the property is actually like and give you a different perspective than just walking around on the property on the ground. Okay, so a little bit of backstory on how I came across these maps that you saw just a minute ago. Um, originally, it was recommended to me to go to my topo and that you could print off some topographic maps or download some files of some topographic maps that you could use for a permaculture project, project or whatnot. And I went to my topo and I think that the maps that they have for the United States are a lot better than the maps that they have for Canada but I went to their online maps and I'll kind of just show you what I what I ran into here but I, there was other places I looked I've been doing quite a bit of looking for maps for around um, where we live and our the property that we just purchased but if we zoom in here uh, it was, doesn't really matter where this is just a random spot but I just want to show you the level of detail but if we go to the topographic map here um, you can see the uh, the range roads and everything there so um, this is kind of the the level of detail that was on them um, you can see you're not even really seeing the the lines of elevation like there's one here uh, and you know this is this is a whole mile here so if you have a, a property like ours that's 50 acres and it's maybe you know this big um, it doesn't really give you any information that you're not going to know just from walking the property and so I needed to look for a better solution so after a lot of searching I came across these maps by ESRI uh, they're called ESRI topographic maps and they had a 1 to 4,000 uh, ratio topographic map for Canada and I was able to access those through a program called ArcGIS so um, it's a you can download it. There's a 60-day free trial uh, if you search for ArcGIS and go to their, their web page And then um, Let's just see here There we go, and then you can just go down to try ArcGIS and um, It's a 60-day trial there's kind of like a whole suite of different things that become available to you including some online stuff and you just put in your name and an email address and create an account with them and then you can uh, download the program that I'm going to be using. They also have an online program um, and it's a little bit more limited but it's still pretty good. Um, so this is our property again here and um, it still has the same level of detail as the actual program which I'll show you in a second. Uh, so if we zoom in one more you can that's that this is the maximum detail for the uh, topographical lines available and uh, the only problem with the online version I had was I wasn't able to export the file in different formats and so eventually what I wanted to do with these maps is be able to either print something out or go into like uh, be like a paint program or some sort of a program and and basically I could draw in where I want to put in swales where I want to put in roads where I want trees things like that and so having the ability to export the map uh, at a fairly high resolution that was what I was looking for and it really wasn't something that I was able to find online okay so once you've created an account and opened the program and logged in uh, you're gonna show up on a screen like this and uh, I'm not an expert at ArcGIS Pro I just barely know some of the functions I learned enough to produce that topographic map that you saw in the opening there uh, but you want to want to start off by selecting map if you select uh, global scene or, or some of these other ones uh, it's not going to point exactly north south east and west and it'll be kind of cockeyed so it worked out best for me um, and then uh, I'm just gonna auto auto name it so I'll let that load up okay uh, so basically the easiest way would be to just find where you are uh, now a lot of the maps that I've been used to using you could just double click to zoom in 
and this doesn't let you do that so you have to go to map and uh, this fix zoom in button here so we're just going to keep zooming in and uh, till we get to where we want to be Okay, so this is the you know approximate area that I'm that I bought that property at, and we'll just keep keep zooming in. Um, I'll I'll show you my property after, but I'm just going to zoom into a random property first. So it actually looks like there's some pretty good texture here, and so just keep going in. The detail that we're looking for it starts to kick in around six thousand. I'm just going to let that load. Let's just see if I can find. It also shows uh, property boundaries. You can see right here, there's a property boundary. So that's also useful um, because that information is already there. So you can actually see if you, uh, where your neighbor's property boundaries are and things like that. And it kind of shows where some of the buildings and home sites are as well. So we're just going to use this one as an example. The next step you're going to want to do is to add another layer to this map. Now this was the part that I had the most trouble with. I think I spent a few hours trying to figure this out and eventually I did. Uh, be, but basically if you go to add data and click on uh, data at the top there and then down to all portal and then search for layers. And this will just bring up the some of the default information that's available in this uh, program here. So, um, and then you're going to want uh, world imagery, and probably high, higher resolution would be better. So click on that. And so this now this shows up, and so don't freak out and try to refind uh, the property or your property on the map at, when this happens. Just go to this navigate and press back, and it'll go back to where you were, but it'll keep the extra information. Now the only thing that's left to do is to go over to appearance. Um, this should already be selected, but if it's not, make sure that's highlighted because that's the layer that you want to change and go to appearance and this is a transparency selector so you can kind of choose how much of that satellite imagery you want to show through and I found through messing around with it that about 70% was pretty good it still lets you see the satellite imagery but, but you can see the topography pretty good as well the last step in order to get your map would be to go to share and this map export button and then it gives you some options here um, you can see I've already exported quite a few different maps uh, but they have a variety of different file types and you can go with uh, PDF uh, we also exported um, some EPS and TIFF maps as well and what you could do is uh, maybe you do a map if you go back to appearance maybe you do a map with the transparency at zero and you could do like a TIFF or an EPS um, like that and then you could do switch it back to 100% transparency and get a, a you know plain topple map as well so then that'll give you some options if you share all or save all three one at 70%, one at 0%, and one at 100%, then you have a variety of um, files available that you can work with later. Okay, so I'm just gonna talk a little bit about our property. Uh, you've already seen some videos of it on my channel. And um, so we exported, this is exported to um, Adobe Acrobat. And um, now one of the nice things about Adobe Acrobat is you can zoom in even more than 100% uh, so if we go into a 200% you can see there's a pretty good level of detail in the map even when it's zoomed in and that'll let you come up with some better uh, a better idea of what the property looks like but I'll just kind of go over here uh, here's the the front of the property you can see the property boundary here and 
on the front and it goes down to down to here is the the southern property boundary uh, but I'm not going to go through everything but just for example if we wanted to put in a road uh, the best places to put roads are on contour or along ridge lines and the reason for that is if you put them um, across gullies or different places you can end up with water wanting to flow across the road and then you end up with erosion problems you have to put in culverts all sorts of things so um, you can see this area here is uh, this this is the approach right here where the hand is and uh, you can actually see a track of where the farmer drives into this property uh, but the road would actually be pretty much along where his track is but then right here he goes down like a gully uh, but so instead I would probably bring the road along the contour and then down this ridge and then down to the crossing point so um, and then also the yard site would be about here so you know that the road can come in and it's pretty much on contour right into the yard site right here uh, but these are the types of things that you can get uh, the information that you can get off of these sor sorts of maps and then you know like let's say later on um, over here is some south facing slope uh, maybe I want to put in an orchard or some of my trees and swales and you could kind of just follow the contour lines and uh, it gives you a good idea of what you're dealing with so eventually uh, when I originally was getting this map what I wanted to do was figure out a way to load it into Google Earth Pro or, or some other program so I could um, draw the stuff right on um, on it and I think that ArcGIS Pro I could do that as well I just haven't figured out those functions yet so um, this is as far as I've come and I figured I'd share that with you guys um, but I mean even just having maps like this saved um, you can always just do the work by uh, you could even just print them off and do all the work by hand so okay so that's it for today Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Please remember to like, subscribe, and comment. Recently, YouTube made a number of changes to their website, which makes it harder for content producers to build their channel. And so if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you have, there's this little bell here. And in order to get all the notifications from my channel, you'll have to click on this bell. And even that's not enough because sometimes your settings will be set for push only. So if you want to get emails as well, push is just to your phone. If you want to get emails as well, you'll have to go into manage settings and then scroll down a little bit and change your subscriptions to push an email. Then you have to go back and then when you click on the bell, um, click on that for all notifications and you'll notice it's push an email now and then save. So they've made it a lot harder to really get all the notifications from your favorite channels. So if you haven't done that already, please do. And I guess that's it, so take care.